Hey everybody, this is Andy Bennett with the CSS News Civil War Interpreter Center. I'm here at Charles B. Acock's birthplace. And this is video three in our con culinary contributions or cultural contributions to Southern cuisine. Uh, in a previous video, in video two, I started our discussion about the enslaved Africans' contribution to our Southern cuisine. I'm going to continue that now. In the previous video, we talked about some of the the yams, black-eyed peas, and some of the other things we don't realize are from Africa. Some of the other things that we get from Africa are okra, uh, which is debated about where in Africa it is from. It's probably from Eastern Africa. Um, but we've got also got uh, some other things. There is a green called bitter leaf. Uh, when enslaved people came to the new world in bondage uh, the european settlers that came to had brought with them the collard green and cabbage and turnip greens so they were used to cooking bitter uh, bitter leaf in africa so they quickly uh, took that ing new ingredient and adapted to the that culinary tradition um, but that's not what we talk about in this recipe we're going to go back to okra or as in some languages gumbo the recipe we're doing today comes from a book by Abby Fisher. Um, it is the cookbook is called What Mears Fisher Knows About Old Southern Cooking, and it is from 1880. Uh, Abby Fisher uh, was born in enslavement. Uh, after the Civil War, she made went to San Francisco and started a successful restaurant. In 1880, she published this book of cooking, and she's got a recipe for gumbo. And she was enslaved in South Carolina, so this is more of the South Carolina style of gumbo and not that style of gumbo that's from Louisiana. That style of gumbo from Louisiana has uh, all that, um, has spices going on in it, some heat from some peppers, uh, and it has some of those French culinary traditions and heat that this gumbo from South Carolina is missing. It's, it's very similar to some of the, the more uh, stews and things from South Carolina. Uh, I've made up some right here. I'm going to show right there. And as always, it's, it's served on rice. That culture, that's another contribution from the enslaved people of Western Africa. Rice had made it to Africa through trade, and the people of Western Africa had cultivated vast rice patties of rice. It was crucial in their cuisine. Uh, that's why, unfortunately, some of them were targeted for enslavement to be brought to South Carolina, to the low country, to grow rice. There were some brought to North Carolina because they tried to grow rice here, too, in a limited amount. But this gumbo recipe is, Miss Fisher says you need a beef shank and you need it cracked. The shank is the lower leg part of the beef, and there was a reason they want it, she wants it cracked. So you're going to put that water in boil it down and what's being released is the natural gelatins in the marrow of the meat are going to come out then you're going to add that okra to it and that mucilagin that's that slimy stuff that's in boiled okra the gelatin and mucilagin is going to mix together and create a nice clear white sauce so that's your sauce that's with this okra and with this beef that's going to cover this rice. And you just need a little bit of salt that's added in the boiling and that's nice meat flavor. It's a delicious, simple dish. As always, those details of that recipe are going to be uh, in, the, in the bottom post there. Um, there is a rich diversity of, of cultural influences uh, from our enslaved people on Southern cooking. It varies depending on where they are from Africa and what other blends they run into in wherever in the South. The cuisine of West, uh, enslaved West Africans create in the South Carolina Low Country is different than the Virginia Tidewater area. That is different from the Deep South. That's different from Louisiana and New Orleans. That's different from the Missy, Upper Mississippi River in Tennessee. It varies depending on access to ingredients and other cultural influences from Europeans. As I said, if they're cooking on the plantation for, for their uh, enslavers, they're going to have to cook to the taste, their taste, and whatever European background they come from 
uh, is going to dictate that, that cooking style. Well, this is just one recipe from Miss Abby Fisher. Uh, go check out that book. It's got some really great recipes and a lot of recipes you'll recognize as stuff you'll see on your table today. As always, check out our videos and rest of the series on our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I hope you were learning something and join me for our next video.